Um, is there anything I have to read out here? There's usually something, isn't there? Uh, and, uh... So this workshop on the annual plan 2526, which is year two of the LTP. And look, this is, uh, there'll be quite a number of these workshops. This is really just the first one to give an introduction and uh, some high level uh, scoping around the uh, finances and the process that we're going to be following as we build towards a consultation document that will be available uh, early or in the first quarter of next year. But uh, what I thought, um, we've I've got Peter Ryan and Russell Holden here who uh, speak to their part in the process. And what we're really uh, uh, looking for from these workshops is your guidance and input on what is going to uh, matter and be important as we go about building that. So that's uh, great, B. That's, Thank you. And yes. I'll just um, interrupt you there just because I, I need to put the apologies from Councillor Moore and Councillor Goff and to remind everyone that this is live streamed, open to the public. It's live streamed, isn't it? Yep. Well, it says here it's live streamed. I thought they were recording, um, but. And sorry, if it's recorded, have... so it's being recorded. So there we go. So, okay. So, sorry, carry Pauline, on. do you mind if I just give apologies for early departure? Sorry, it's coming from over here. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Thanks. Is he a from them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll note that. Okay. Sorry to interrupt there. Carry on. Uh, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. No, I think that's a timely point for me to hand over to Peter. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's Look, deja vu all over again, isn't uh, it? Well, let's <laughs> let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Yeah. Look, this is a very brief session. It's just to outline a little bit of process before I hand over to Russell with the, the financial position. Uh, you'll remember we discussed uh, options on how to tackle this up in the, the Mayor's Lounge. Uh, there was strong support for an annual plan process, a reasonably light one. There wasn't much appetite for an LTP amendment with 10 years worth of audited numbers and all of the complexity that went with that. So we, we are already building accordingly around process. Um, just a reminder, the, the purpose of an annual plan is to update specific parts of the LTP, for example, where um, the transport funding or whatever may have, have moved, um, and not to rethink the overall financial strategy, infrastructure strategy, and, and, and many, many years of an LTP. It's really just a one-year adjustment. Um, We've drafted, and I stress drafted, some project milestones uh, accordingly and just moving very smoothly into those. Of course, there we are at the top. Um, now, these dates are not carved in stone, but we do need to give you some indications, especially for your calendars and diaries, as to what's going to happen here so that you can um, have some over-the-horizon view of, of, of who's going to be presenting what. We're working closely with the parks, three waters and transport teams to come back to you with firstly a snapshot of what they have in year two of the LTP. In other words, what was just signed off back in June, as well as the carried over actions from the LTP. Uh, not everything got resolved then and we've got a little bit of backlog to work through. So we'll come back to you with details and options there. And also to listen on those key infrastructure areas, especially to your feedback on what you're looking for. So those briefings will have some staff content at the front, but there'll also be a big chunk there set aside for debate, discussion, uh, listening by staff. Um, then having got through the major infrastructure areas, we have about six weeks, November to mid-December, to look at the overall plan, including the, the rates figures and projected rates figures. Uh, and of course, as always, to try to arrive at broad consensus, not an approved plan, but broad consensus when we break for Christmas so that staff know what they can go away and build um, in order to adopt a draft in the middle of February, which is those timings you see in the bottom half there are very standard. Um, I imagine to many of you, they're quite familiar by now. Adopt in the middle of February, consult, hearings, briefings, and then adopt a final in June. So that's, that's the program at this stage. We're certainly amenable to any feedback on, on those milestones. Um, assuming that this is broadly correct, we'll build 
a quite detailed plan for staff and counsellors uh, uh, with more detailed milestones. But in overall, that's the, the flow that we're looking at to, as of today. Um, is there any feedback before we hear from the finance team? Okay, we'll take a couple of questions. Councillor Sarah. Um, thanks so much. I'm just wondering, it's not exactly annual plan, it's a long-term plan. Um, there were some things that cropped up during the long-term plan that we all thought, oh, that needs working on for next time. Yes. Not necessarily annual plan, but process-wise. When are we doing the LTP review stuff? Because it seems that every time this happens, well, it's so far after the LTP because we're already getting into other stuff that everyone has forgotten to write everything down and we haven't done the review stuff properly and then everyone's forgotten and, and we don't make the changes the next time. Um, I, I'm not really in a position to answer that one. I'm yeah, yeah, just can we can we look at the LTP review because there were definitely issues through that. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. Okay, Victoria. Is there anything in this proposed annual plan process that's different to how you ordinarily do your annual plans? Uh, the difference is slight, and that is putting the three big infrastructure area briefings right at the beginning with scope for listening. Uh, that's quite early and quite focused on the big infrastructure stuff. Um, normally, there would be a series of generic workshops to take you to November. This time around, we've, we've heard the request to look at those three areas. So that would be the main. The other timings are all pretty standard. That big focus on LTP leftovers and three infrastructure portfolios is probably the, the major difference from a normal annual plan. All good. Okay, thank you. Ty sorry, Tyrone. <coughs> sorry, very late question. Will there be kind of like in this process, um, I guess an opportunity for staff to come back to us and say, I don't think you got that right in the LTP and this is what you might think about changing. There, there is, yes. I mean, the November, mid-December period, that window there, there is normally, um, I forget exactly which attachment, I think it's attachment D to the council adoption report, which is um, <laughs> minor errors and omissions. And that's that's where staff would come back and say, we've got a costing wrong or we've got a figure wrong or we've got a level of service wrong. They're swept up into one place for you to consider. Celeste. Um, just in regards to the process, how does the community board fit into this in terms of having, because one of the bits of feedback we got was around understanding kind of program level budgets or, and, and sort of having specific input. And we're told that these things will come to community boards, but community boards meet only once a month. Yep. So there is a timing issue in terms of making sure they can input in a timely way. Yes. And also one of the reflections on the long-term plan is people, including the CUNY board, really want good information to share with the communities about stuff in the area. Yeah. Some of the spreadsheet stuff probably wasn't as detailed as it could have been. Is, okay. it, is that something that we can feed into the engagement team, but also <clears throat> make sure that it's really clearly signaled in the process? Uh, yes, there's a couple angles there. I mean, one is when staff go out to boards, like um, I believe parks at the moment are actually going out to the boards. Mm. Uh, the other one is, of course, the nexus from boards back to council through the councillor because councillors are on, on the boards. So there's a direct sort of ambassador role there between what happens here and what happens out at the boards. Um, and lastly, through the PMO, we can um, look at how we provide the capital information on, on, a, on a ward because there is now the, that new technology around the projects and wards. So, um, yeah, we can look at all three of those channels. Tyrone. Thank you. Um, now, during the LTP, there was a really good process where, you know, we had councillors had a good um, way of sort of inputting, you know, there was a tool. We yes. could input, you know, things that we were sort of, you know, keen to adjust or to insert or whatever. Um, so what's the, when's the earliest opportunity for, for us to be able to engage um, like that? You know, just putting in things like, this is what, you know, this is yep. something I'd like to see in the, in the annual plan. I, I know what you, you're talking about, the, the Q&A tool. Um, yeah, that's basically. never actually shut down and that will continue through this process. So it'll be, there'll be no new methodology. It'll be the same tool, same approach that you're already familiar with from the LTP. 
Cool. And so the, just fire it off into the Q&A tool. Even, we, can, we can send out a reminder on how to do that. Brilliant. No, that's fantastic, Peter. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Okay, that's it for the questions for now. So we'll carry on. The mayor might be here soon. He's just at the um, opening the aerospace uh, summit, so he's obviously been delayed. But so carry on. Uh, thanks very much, uh, and good good morning, everybody. So this is the the first look of the financial. Well, I think it's the second. I think you've already had a brief look um, already when I was was away. So. Uh, probably covering some some familiar ground but effectively we start uh, in year two and then we update for for known things and this is very very early in the piece so there's not a lot uh, that we know to update yet so we'll have a first look i'll, I'll go through some of the things uh, that we've uh, know now but the budget build itself uh, is happening as we speak um, so moving into here so the first uh, update is on uh, inflation assumptions. So we get that uh, information from Burrell. Uh, so we've got an indicative numbers uh, already uh, with the final due in late October. So what that is saying is there's been an uplift uh, in the, the level of inflation uh, indices, if you like, that uh, they had signaled as part of the LTP to what it is now. So uh, the base assumption for OPEX uh, is 4.1. And we just highlight the water's maintenance contract in there. Um, so when we get the information from Burrell, it's a, a wide range of, it's a matrix of uh, different activities and expenditure groups. We do a weighted average of that, but, and, and that's how we arrive at the 4.1. But in saying that, the water's was, was higher than that. So we've um, pulled that out separately. So that's for the OPEX. So, so, so when you talk about the um, inflation, uh, is that the increase on the inflation rate that we previously built in? No. Or is that the level of inflation? Yeah, for sure. So, sorry, I'll go back to the top line is where we had uh, inflation from uh, Burrell and other factors uh, of the LTP. Yeah. So taking the first column was 2.9. Yeah. Burrell have come back and said, okay, so it, it needs to be a bit higher from what the... Uh, <laughs> research they've done so we need yep. to add 1.2 on so now that the base is now 4.1 thank you that's cute. yep and similar exercise going through uh for the capital so the base assumption is now uh 4.4 work with waters sitting at uh seven percent i will say that um that's just well not just but that's the information from burrell in addition to that we go through all the contracts and we look where they have um i guess cost increase provisions and what that all looked like so it was an exercise going along us beside this information too so uh, that would override uh, what Burrell would say uh, whether it's up or down so there is a you know there is still some movement to happen in that space yeah chair was um, just over 700 million uh, 95.6 being to Kaha and the core being 6.1 so changes since then, uh, the uh, applying the burial inflation uh, factor, uh, that puts an extra 3.4 in. Uh, there were some carry forwards uh, from 23-24 uh, year. So an increase in the 25-26 in the year and slight decreases in the years following. And then the LTP actions uh, carry forward. So we've shown those there as they were... Um, uh, I guess discussed and, and and recorded as part of the LTP. Just noting that th those individual items will come back with the portfolios, the, the three major ones that um, Peter's already spoken about. So those those will come up for dis for discussion again. And so uh, that shows then what the current position is as we sit today. Uh, what the capital programs will be. So seven fifty year one and. 702 and 688 in the following years. Um, so the rates impact change from the LTP is that that bottom line there showing what that impact is. So putting those things together, um, we uh, for year two of the LTP we were um, indicating that it was going to be an 8.45 percent increase in rates. When we add on the uh, barrel, like I said, that's just the interim results. Um, it's a one, an extra 1.1. 1 
uh, we show the, uh, the other movements from the carry forwards and the LTP actions arrives at, um, as we sit today, um, a current um, position of 9.73, broken out to um, just under 8 for the base and 1.75% uh, for Takaha. Like I say, the budget build is, is happening as we speak, um, so that's still to come through um, in this information. This is just the, the first cut, the first look at uh, what we have. Um, we're going to move over to debt next, but listen, I'm happy to stop here and take any questions, uh, if there are any. You must be doing a fantastic job, oh, Victoria. I see you've got no specific OPEX changes incorporated yet. Have you got a steer on that? Are you expecting some increase in the OPEX? There's a, it's a good question, Councillor. There's a, there's a slide later on towards the end. You know, there's a number of factors still in play that we haven't, you know, we are expecting some, some changes, some upward pressure. Electricity is one, contract pricing reviews is, is another. Um, no, so no, those, there's nothing large that's been signaled to come through. But like I say, that work is going and it's not due to be finished till mid-October. Yep. Samuel? Yeah, thanks. It's probably along the similar vein as just trying to understand what options you'll bring back, given we've gone out with a rateable number and Burl has changed quite significantly in three months. Um, yet my kind of read of the economy is, in fact, inflation is going down. So I'd be keen to test that a lot more. Um, or understand how we potentially didn't get it right during the LTP. So, so two things there, understand the inflation impacts, because it seems counterintuitive for it to be going up at the moment. Um, and secondly, what options you'll present to us so that we can make choices around the impacts of the budget. Thanks, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I was quite moderate today, given <laughs> what you've put up there. So yeah, carry on rewardless. <laughs> hey, any more questions? In, you, have you done? Um, carry on. In, in reply to that, Sorry. I haven't got any options or uh, unpacking that. Like I say, the, the final number from Borough will come through um, late October. Uh, we'll know what that is. So far as options go through, we're, we're doing the, build, the budget build at the moment. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm not 100% oh, yes. sure. When the, when the bill stuff does come through at the end of October, I'm really keen to understand what's driven the change. For sure. Because it just seems counterintuitive. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, normally we do our budget by this is what we've planned to do, this is what we'd like to add to it, and this is where the number comes out. What would it look like if we did the opposite? We said this is the level that we will be happy to put rates up by, then you come back with, well, if that's the case, these are the things that need to change. And are you happy to change them? Is that a consideration? Certainly that's a consideration. I'll throw you, Mr. Mayor. That, that's a consideration, Councillor. Um, that would be quite an extensive exercise. And without touching levels of service, there's, you know, uh, would be constrained in what we could change as to what we're doing. Yeah. And so we are, we are changing levels of service uh, depending on the magnitude. And it wouldn't take much, I wouldn't think, before that becomes an amended LTP. Mm. Okay. So it's either do the work and have a happy public or don't do the work and have a really unhappy public. It's one or the other. Okay. Mm. Any more? Any more questions? Carrot. Cool. Thank you. So, just moving on to the next slide. Yep. Uh, a bit on debt and interest, and I guess it's uh, subliminally mentioned about you know we're seeing uh, CPI and inflation going down, and we're seeing interest rates go down. Just make the comment that a, a lot of our debt is already hedged. Um, and then doing the calculations uh, for the LTP, we had anticipated um, that uh, the OCR would be down at around 3%. We're seeing slightly wider margins uh, from the market and from LGFA, which is pushing um, um, up a little, uh, but we're not expecting uh, interest rates to make a, a, an impact on the LTP projections uh, that we've already modelled. Yeah, and so the last comment there, that ag borrowing costs are, are around, going to be on average between 4.9 and 5% and over the long term, including the extra costs coming through. Okay, Sam? 
Yeah, okay. thanks, Russell. Can you explain what you mean by additional margins on our LGFA borrowing? Yeah, LGF, sorry, you, Mr. Mayor. LGFA have put the um, margins or the credit margins up. So that's the bit that they charge for us borrowing, us having access to the funds. So yeah. what, what's the mechanism? Because we're a shareholder in LGFA. Mm -hmm. It would be good to understand the mechanisms where we can influence those decisions because, Karen, it, again, it just seems weird that an organisation we own would put up the cost of borrowing to us mm -hmm. to presumably fund overhead or some risk. Um, it's market driven, councillor. Um, so we're seeing a number of, um, I guess, more government bonds in the market. So that's driving up, I guess, the, 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 um, the appetite or the attractiveness of government bonds. Yep. Uh, people will go there. So to stay competitive, there's had to be a, a, an increase. Yeah. No, nothing really. But we can come back to more detail. Right. I'll come down to that meeting. <laughs> Pardon? That is, but. It would be good to just understand I'll if speak. we have any influence over LGFA, though, given yeah. we're not exactly slowing down how much we're taking cool. borrowing from. So I, I think that was the voice of the treasurer, was it? Possibly coming down. I will just add, yeah, well, I will add that um, the LGFA um, team are quite keen to engage with councils. So we um, are in the process of setting up a meeting okay. where they can come down and, cool. and speak as well. So, yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So we might come back if the treasurer does come through the door. Um, and items still to be covered off, like I mentioned, the electricity contract. Uh, that contract's being uh, renewed in September, so we're doing work now on what the, the forecasting uh, of well, what the pricing is likely to be um, going forward. Wage and remuneration movements. Uh, we're still in negotiations with unions uh, for the current year on, on what that'll be and the impact of that going forward and um, like I mentioned uh, we're going through all the contracts um, all the significant contracts and looking for um, price increase provisions what that might look like and how that will impact so you know there's there's a there's a fair chunk of work still happening and so um, yeah this is just the, the first stage of, of where we're at so just in the I guess just to be totally open and transparent and, and thorough in what we've got, this is it. this is the starting point that we see, and the work is is from now, really. So, yes, Sarah. Thanks so much. I'm just on the electricity contract renewal. I know we had some um, sort of uh, queries from councillors maybe six years ago um, around the potential for doing a fully renewable um, contract. We've ended up going with the all the government um, system, I guess, yep. mostly. Sometimes that's mostly renewable, sometimes it's not. Um, are we actively looking at that this time? I know at the conference, I went to the business conference, um, there was some discussion around the OI, uh, all of government stuff not being as helpful as it used to be when it comes to electricity stuff and people moving away from that. Um, that's a great question. Thanks, Councillor. And through you, Mr. Mayor, look, I'm not 100% sure of the details on that, but we are, because the contract is coming up, we are reviewing uh, aspects across the board. Um, the finance team, are, uh, well, we are chasing the facilities team to get more detail on where that's likely to go and where they're at and what options are um, going to be available. But once I've got more, I'll come back with more. Yeah, yeah. and can we, with that, with the, with the stuff that comes back, I know that there was also work being done on the potential for uh, a council-wide facilities um, solar upgrade to reduce capital costs. And I know that there's a lot of talk about the fact that from day one now, even with finance on solar, um, it's cheaper than than other forms, so. Right, okay, thank you. I'll feed that back to the team looking at it, yep. Mm -hmm. Aaron? Yeah, just on ones like the electricity, like, do we have a date for Ko-Fi Park coming online and can we just directly buy our electricity back off them at a better rate than you're buying off the national grid? Things like that. Like, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat and I think that has enough electricity to cover us. The market won't allow it. So you can't buy your own electricity. So we own the lines, we own the park, the park that makes the electricity, but we're not allowed to buy our own that could be a wee problem in the system. Okay, there's something we can look at. Anyone else got a question? 
No, carry on, gentlemen. Um, okay, that's it. Okay, um, all right. Uh, just to finish with next steps, um, uh, as I said, we're open to any feedback on those dates and milestones that you've got there. But um, unless there is a significant change which we need to bring back to you, we'll go away and build a detailed plan now. Uh, we'll circulate that to you and, and staff so everyone's clear about what the game plan is. Uh, as Russell has said, the finance team is currently working through OPEX budgets now. Um, we are also working on the follow-up actions from the LTP. There are still quite a few of those. Um, with the big uh, infrastructure portfolios, they will bring those carryover actions to you as part of their briefing. So they'll give you a picture, a snapshot of where they are in the, with the LTP, what's been approved. They'll give you um, follow-up actions that are outstanding for their portfolio, as well as space to discuss and, and, and debate. Uh, and then the next step, of course, is the preparation of those big infrastructure briefings. Uh, so you'll be hearing from Lynette and, and Brent and Gavin and so forth in the next three to four weeks. Okay. Good gold. Thank you very much, uh, Eric. Yep. Back to the um, previous slide, the contract pricing review, is that for increases or decreases or both? I three, Mr. Mertz, both. We're just looking at whether there is a provision for an increase, what that might look like, or there isn't. So rather than just apply, apply burrows uh, factor across everything, mm. we do it uh, that will apply that if there's no contract or the contract is, says, um, you know, it just fits the market. But if there is provision for it and it's fixed, it might be CPI, it may not be. It might be the LG uh, local government um, price and cost um, index. So depending on what that is, we'll put that through. But yeah, there is upside risk that it's going to be higher. So, yep. but, but normally when um, an economy's less stable, there's more room for negotiating contracts down, especially if you go to the contractor and say, how can you make it cheaper? And they'll go, well, you give us a longer term with some guarantee and, and the number gets a lot better, that kind of thing. Hmm. Um, obviously, that's part of what the infrastructure working group will hopefully be looking at. But it's quite a good time to be getting good prices locked in going forward, I would have thought, rather than worse prices. Okay. Is that not how other people Contract see it? Work. Yep. Okay. Th thank you. We're, we're right up on time and we've got other things to do just straight after, just before lunch. Um, thank you for um, introducing us to the first step of the annual plan. I'm sure we will see you again with the next instalment shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds like a battle by story. Okay, now, now we've got uh, elected member professional development training. So Helen and David are here to discuss that. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Ian. Uh, yes, this, this uh, the fifth of today's session is seek your guidance uh, following the allocation of additional budget to professional development for after the council decided to not renew its membership to local government New Zealand. Now, just to be clear for today, we are only talking about the governing body professional development. This is the mayor and councillors only. Uh, now, you'll, you may recall from uh, the previous workshop, we talked about this budget provides allocation for individual training, course fees, travel and accommodation. Now, the current policy allows $4,000 per annum for each individual councillor not, but not the mayor, uh, to attend courses and to have the associated costs covered from that budget. Uh, that's the current policy. The same budget is also the, the pool of money for any group training, if there is group training, but there is nothing express in the current policy about that. So in terms of what the budgets look like now that the local government New Zealand savings has been applied, for this financial year, the total sum is around $100,000. And for next year, uh, it's significantly more and following. So those numbers are on the screen for you there. Um, that's a $25,000 uplift 
taken from the local government New Zealand allocated funding. Uh, so that, that number is significantly more than previous years. The, the just by way of uh, background for how the budgets were set is in 2020, the uh, second annual plan that year reduced the budgets for elected member training. Um, and they have been gradually bouncing back. And next year is the first year that goes to the first, uh, back to the original complement as adjusted for inflation and so on. So, Helen, we, we just dropped it down because of COVID really, wasn't it? That's it... my understanding. It, it predates me, yeah. but my understanding is there are a number of savings for that second annual plan in 2020. Mm. Um, so... If we were to continue to individualize that budget, this is what it would look like on a per annum basis. So on this year, uh, the, the policy allows for 4,000, but if it was fully allocated on an individualized basis, it would be $6,250 for this current financial year, if you were to change the policy. Then for the next years, uh, sorry, just Hi. go back. Um, it could look like that if it was to be, if, if the policy were to be fully individualized. Now on a previous workshop, uh, the guidance that some of you gave was in relation to pooling and bundling the money over the course of a council term. So if we were to do that on the current budget allocation for the next council term, that is this figure, if it were to be fully individualized to for all councillors in the mayor. So that's $28,394. So before that was placed before you as an option at, uh, for the council to consider at a meeting, I did just want to go through potentially some other options. So the next slide would include a slightly reduced allocation. So that could be um, twenty thousand dollars over the uh, triennium, and the the there's no exact science in that, but that would look like, say, for example, a significant course such as say the Institute of Directors course, and yet there'd still be enough for each councillor to then go to two or three conferences if they so chose, or it could be um, just the annual allocation as is now. Um, that would also provide an allocation within that budget for group training as you see fit. Um, the cost of group training um, very much depends on, on the provider, um, but it's anywhere between six and $10,000 per course if we were to uh, secure a trainer to provide something for you directly, such as say treaty training, or if there was a need for the council to have some offsites. It would also co cover any um, external facilitation for post-election induction work. Um, this budget is also the pot of money where any uh, representative duties would come out of. So that would also allow a provision for when a member is attending um, a conference or an, a sister city visit, on behalf of the council, not on behalf of the mayor. The mayor has his own budget for um, his representative duties. So there is a number of different ways you could move those numbers about. Um, and this is just one suggestion. And so if I go on now to the questions I have for you before the paper comes back to the full council, uh, do councillors have a preference for an annual tr or triennium payment? Again, for a triennium, that would really only logistically uh, uh, take effect from after the next election. Should there be an allocation for group training? Um, there were some views expressed last time about that. Should there be an allocation for representative duties? And should the uh, policy be expanded to include the mayor? which it currently excludes. So I'm now in your hands for further questions and comments. Um, yep. Um, Sam. Yes, um, thank you, Helen. I'm just <laughs> conscious we just had a presentation on, on a, a, you know, budgetary increases. And I just wondered, is there anything to stop us maybe as a solution holding the policy at the $4,000 a year 
and just having the ability to draw that over the three year term. So I'm just thinking that's a lot of money, you know, sort of thirty thousand dollars a counselor is is quite excessive for what we really need. I just wonder whether we hold the whether we could hold the policy and then just return the money back to the to the pot. It, absolutely, it's it's the council's policy to have four thousand dollars per annum per uh, member, and that could be uh, applied over the triennium. It's your policy, and it could very much accommodate that. Could, if that could, was, that, could that be an option? Because um, I mean, thirty thousand dollars over three years is quite a lot. It, yes, that, that is. I, that is why I'm here. Yeah, no, no, no. I appreciate you raising it. I, no, I genuinely do. I think that's. Thank you. Twenty thousand seven hundred is, is what you're suggesting. Uh, I, th I think Council McDonald is suggesting keeping the four thousand over the three years, which okay. would no, be... that's right. No, no, but the, the thirty thousand is really now twenty thousand seven hundred. Is that the way? Yes. It, it, it could be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it left, uh, yeah. Um, Sam, you're done? No, I think it would just be good to have that option of kind of the Absolutely. holding the policy as it is, but having the ability if someone wanted to go and do like the, the IOD course, for example, they can draw that over, you know, that, that but that would be it. I, I, I can't, yeah, no, I'm sure no one will want to spend $30,000 on this stuff. Not a rate payer. Mm -hmm. but just, but just to follow up on that, is it easier? for accounting purposes to have it spread over three years? Uh, from an accountant perspective, it's actually easier to have it annualised. Mm. Yes, You'd have because um, we don't carry over operational money. Usually this would be an exceptional situation for finance colleagues, and there's no one, none of them in the room, but um, they can make it work, but it, it does. it is not easy for them. So Sam, you're suggesting 4,000 annualised and the 10,000 no, could no, be no, over no. three years. What, what, all I'm suggesting is, I mean, I know it is easy for accountants, but this is not, you know, in terms of the size of the organisation, they'll be able to handle it. I just think yes. for a term, there's 4,000 a year, but you have the ability if you want to draw it forward over that three years. So make it make it for 12 for the training. So what you're yeah. saying is the week after someone gets elected, if they wanted to, they could go on a $12,000 course in the first week, but have nothing up their sleeve for the rest of the time they're here. Just to yeah, it's just the ability it. to choose what you do for the three years with it. But I, I guess I'm more signalling that we, you know, in, in these economic times, we can't have $30,000 a person for professional development. Okay, uh, done. All right. Vic? Oh, thanks for raising that. Is there an option for that to be inflation adjusted over the triennium as well, rather than just sticking it at 4,000 per annum? Yeah. Uh, actually, my question is around, um, I note that we're only talking about the councillors and the mayor, and you made that a, that point at the very beginning. Yes. Um, what's the process uh, for other elected members on community boards? Because uh, I'm, I'm keen to understand, one, what that process is, but two, should we be also looking at that in terms of budget allocation in the round of this conversation so that we're dealing with it in one suite in order that we've got the full information? So, so the uh, current policy for the community boards is that, that each board is, responsibility, is responsible for spending their own budget allocation on training. And since as part of the local government New Zealand savings, each board has had that budget increased by $8,333, which was how, uh, because if you recall, the resolution was that $30,000 was uh, allocated to the boards. Um, and there was a reduction to that full figure to a portion to the workplace support, which is where the 8,333 uh, figure um, came from. So those boards, each board has those funds available to them now. So there's no further review uh, from a policy perspective about that? No, but I could speak to the community board team and come back to you on that. Yeah, as far I, as I'm aware, there's no, no plan to change that. Each board, it's up to each the individual board to make those calls. I'm just keen to ensure that the community board members also have the opportunity to input into the decision making that affects them and their professional development, rather than us making decisions that impact them. Is the point that I'm trying to make there. So, so Helen, just to let me butt in here, just um, for the clarity of people watching, 
we've got uh, $25,000 what we're talking about today, if we put it in there or not, that from LGNZ savings. The $30,000 we saved from LGNZ savings has already been divided out to the boards and it's sitting in their bank account, for want of a better word, but, for them to spend the way they'd like. Y yes, that was the council resolution. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm just making sure people out there. No, 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 I had one further comment, really, not a question. Um, my preference is around the triennium allocation as opposed to the annual. I hear what you say in relation to accounts, but I, I think that there's a way that they can do that. And my reasoning for the triennium approach is just recognising the different ages and stages of people's professional development and often with family circumstances you know you can't always uh, do training at a particular time so I think it creates greater flexibility uh, to adjust to the individualized needs of the elected members it's my preference thanks um yeah it's it, it's way more than is, is needed for councillors um but I what I am wondering is what work is being done to assess what um, governance training needs elected members as a whole need and finding the right training so often it's less to us just if we see a conference coming up or something like that um, when I first started on council there was a really good process where we were alerted to various LGNZ courses coming up that were in areas like RMA or, or whatever that we needed some background in. Um, but that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore. Um, and I was wondering how that was happening. Because, I mean, everyone wants good governance from all of their elected members. Um, but if you leave it up to elected members who don't have experience in these areas, then there's no way for them to get that experience, if you like. And then the money doesn't get spent and people don't get training and then everyone complains about decision-making. Yes, so the, the current policy is that uh, it's self-directed. Um, and But if the policy were to change, um, and I'm aware, and I'm looking at the Chief Executive to perhaps jump in here, um, that we have identified that as a, as a gap, um, but we haven't yet identified how we're going to fill it. I think, I think that's fair to say. Okay. Yeah, because, I mean, the type of training that might be required for local, um, locally elected members might be a little bit different to businesses and those kind of things. And so, like, how do we get that stuff that's specific um, to, to that space? Yeah. Jake? Yeah, just picking up off, off that point, it may even be that we write into the policy that on a triennial basis or an annual basis, there's a conversation with the chief executive about skills deficits or, or whatever it is, but it has to be written into the policy. I agree with the general thrust that the um, triennial is better than annual in spite of the fact that finance don't like it. Um, and I think that solves most of the problems we have in terms of training. I'm relaxed. I think obviously the original figure is way, way, way too high. Uh, relaxed whether it goes up to six or and, and you have that group training but my question is I mean it's not exhausted at the moment not everyone uses all of their training budget what happens to the unspent funds is that just a general saving to the organization if that is because and, and you're nodding maybe we want to tie some of that to the say the mayor's welfare fund or something like that is that an option uh yes yeah, so I can confirm that even on the uh lower budget level for the last two years uh previous year it was underspent and uh by so for the for the last financial year the, the total budget was 75k and um at the end of that financial year just over 40k had been spent oh that's cool yeah i, I would like to see an option to top up one of those funds yeah. you know sending money out externally i think is a good thing to do the other point i had um is about the community boards when we uh, discussed this matter, I was informed that there was a budget for training for the boards. Then I spoke to a team at the board and they said, oh, what do you mean? That's our operational day-to-day -day spending money. So there's a disconnect in terms of what people think that money's for. And when you say it goes to the boards, I think it's actually going to the governance teams. And it would be, I don't know that the boards actually have any oversight over, the, over those funds and are actually making any decisions about it. I'll, I'll follow that up yeah. because that's not my understanding. Okay. Yeah, no, it should be tagged for that and that alone. Yeah. 
um, Schlicht. Um, starting with some questions, do we know what other comparative councils provide their councillors for professional development? My understanding is ECAN councillors have about 6,000 per year. It, it's really varied from when we undertook some surveys earlier um, earlier in the year. Um, they, they're very different because some um, councils don't have much of an individual allocation, but they have greater in-house uh, training. Um, so it, 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 there's no straight comparator, I, mm. I think. I, I, the, for example, in the Cargill City, um, when we contacted them, they said they currently spend about three thousand per annum per councillor, and it's a self. It's a, sorry. Did you say in the cargo? In the cargo, yeah. Right, three thousand. And it's a self-managed okay. model. Too far uh, off the But they're now moving to a more of a central pool right. sort of notion. So it varies greatly amongst different councils. Right. At Ecan, you get more depending on how fast you get there. That's how, <laughs> how fast you get there. <laughs> Um, and picking up on that point that currently we don't do a lot of group training and we don't have access to the LGNZ resource anymore, the, the status quo would mean that actually we've got less access than we did previous, previous to that decision. So that would be my concern of the status quo. So that's a comment. Um, with the um, allocation that we've currently got and when was the last time that got reviewed to make sure that that's keeping and I would agree with the community board comment too making sure that that's part of the conversation when was the last time we assessed that going this is a static number at what point does that get readjusted for inflation or whatever the current policy was adopted in 2019 okay so that's a few years since then um and then the final one is I guess my comment would be I actually think it is, should be a priority in terms of providing an allocation for community boards and councillors for professional development. Mm -hmm. So I'd support some increase. And I'd also, I think that the group allocation would be really helpful because currently the induction process, I have to say, is particularly uh, light touch. For people that are coming from a range of backgrounds, I actually think it's really critical that we provide a really robust, um, good governance type uh, focus for the induction so opportunities for that also given that we spend money well we should be attending conferences and things on behalf of council currently we're having to do that out of our individual budgets so we're having to make a choice whether to represent council or do professional development we shouldn't really have to make that choice we should all be able to represent council if we represent a committee and do professional development so I'd like to see that there is some group training allocation provided for um, now that we've made the decision to go in this direction, I think we should actually not just say it's all about savings because I'm aware through CCHL you can actually do additional training and there isn't a cap on some of that training that's provided to councillors who are on that. So I want to make sure that we've got a, a fair process for all councillors to access the support they need. You can stand for the board and work for free as well if you like. If, if you're getting it, if you're getting it, Sarah and I for that, we give it well, a lot of time. We all represent different things, but just don't always have access to the training. Right. right. So, okay. Tim, just pick up on a. Could I just Sorry. pick up on a couple of those points? So, firstly, in terms of a representative duty, that that would be a council decision for someone to represent the council, not an individual decision. So, the council decides we should send X number of people to represent the city. I um, then that would come here. Mm -hmm. for a decision possibly via the mayor's report or another another vehicle resolution. a resolution yes um, and secondly um, in terms of preparation for induction um, I see that that would be something that would be well planned with feedback from councillors this side of next election together with the chief executive with input from the executive team um, and to take into account your feedback from the, the experience last time um, so that we can make sure we can meet everybody's needs as part of that process. Got one additional question around sister city duties, just what that means, out, that fall outside the mayor's budget. Would that include travel, say, to a, another part of the world? Would that come out of that budget? Yes, it does, as it does currently. Oh, it does currently. Yes. So we'd just be putting, putting more allocation to cover that cost? That's correct. Okay. Okay, um, moving right along, we're going to run out of time. Yeah, Tim? Um, thank you. Um, I do agree with Sam with regards to a triennial budget and an individual budget um, for each councillor. 
Um, it is hard to argue an increase, I know, when there's never actually spent, but I do think there should be an increase. Um, and I would argue you're um, on um, slide four, current financial year, so around 6,000, up from 4,000. I think that would be logical, but if it's not spent, then obviously it would, I totally agree that it should go to the Mayor's Welfare Fund or something of a, yeah. Um, so I do think that's really important. So I think I'm all for the, say, increase to 6,000, it being triennial, so you you choose what to do with it. And if it, the budget isn't used, then it goes to the Mayor's Welfare Fund or something, just to keep it simple. I don't believe in a collective group. It isn't one big fund for everybody. I think it should be individual. Um, and as for group training, um, I think it would be good for us as a team to do that. But to be quite honest, when have we actually all got together and arrived on time? Just saying. Okay, we've, we've got shed loads of questions. Yes, we've got you, Yanni. Uh, Pauline, then Aaron. Yeah, look, I basically agree with um, the comments that Celeste has, has put up. I think, Sam, you're looking at basically 12,000 for the each, 4,000 a year for three years equals 12,000. So it means that you would not be able to do an IOD course and a conference in those three years. And I think a, I think it's about 10 grand for an IOD course. 12. Yeah, I'm sorry, I probably wasn't clear. I'm not I'm not advocating for courses or anything. I'm just saying just hold the policy as it was. Yeah, right. Just in, in terms of the current economic environment. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I think that I really support the um the twenty thousand seven hundred over the three years um and leaving forty three five hundred for other things like I agree with Celeste, we need a really, really good improved induction process um for the in current elections and whether a lot of these things dropped off post COVID, I don't know, because we used to do a lot of those uh, finance courses and good governance courses modules, and they were quite good. Um, so, and I think that training for councillors is really important. We, this is this is a board. This is we make hefty decisions, and I think the better training we can do, the better. So, I, I really think that um, yeah, there's twenty thousand seven hundred over three years is a really good option for this money that we decided that when we pulled back from LGNZ, we would use that money for something like this. I don't support any balance left over going into the Mayor's Welfare Fund. I think it should just go back into the organisation because we need it for operational. <laughs> and the Mayor's Welfare Fund, I don't think, needs it at the moment. It's looking quite hefty. Thanks particularly to those councillors who are on CCHL doing all that work from bringing in that remuneration. Seriously, thank you. Um, so I do support the option you put up there for 20700 over the three years, remembering we don't have to use it all. It's not There'll a be a lot of councillors who don't use it all. Aaron. Yeah, um, so I, I support Sam's position as in um, keeping it uh, about where it is. Uh, I do agree with the group trainings and the ones, I, I actually thought the ones we had at the Netball Centre were, were quite good. Um, There's aspects of that that were quite beneficial. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, to Tim's point, if you want everyone to turn up first, just start with lunch or morning tea. <laughs> um, and everyone will be there. It's, uh, it works well. So, yeah, no, keep, keep the budget. But the, um, the clear the cupboards budgeting, I don't support. Uh, if you hit, Confucius says, if you're broke, stop spending. So, given the council's quite broke, if there's leftover money, back into the council coffers. Just You don't have to spend every cent and every pot every year it's um it's not uh, it's not wise so thank you for speaking out on that pauline and uh i that's my position thank you okay yani uh yeah a uh, slightly different view uh i thought that that money that we spent on that guy was just didn't really achieve much and was just a lot of time and cost so yeah that's how I remember what it was right uh so, I mean, I just kind of question some of that stuff. Um, I, I just want to pick up on Celeste's point, though. Is Have we got a process around conferences that we should be attending? Because, like, we don't get reports to council, so it's very well to say it's a council decision, but we never get the report saying there's a planning conference. Would council like to send XYZ delegates? We used to get it. We used to get ones for youth comp the youth and local government conference. We used to get... Um, transport, waste, infrastructure. So there just there does seem a big gap. And like, you know, I, I didn't mind because I hadn't spent my budget on 
on stuff. So I, I use my budget to represent council and actually speak at an event. And, you know, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into preparing for that. And I was happy to do that because I did have, you know, some budget available, but I did think it was a bit unfair that that comes out of professional development when you're actually doing council, a representative role for council, the organization. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we do have a clear process around that. I also wondered, given that LGNZ are now holding the conference in Christchurch next year, whether we have got any thought to rejoining. You can attend as an individual. That, that, that's not quite what we're talking about here today. Thank you very oh, much. I'll we second that, the, Danny. The money that we're... <laughs> Good on you. Uh, but anyway, so, can, so what are we going to do about the conference stuff? Well, is there going to be... <laughs> no, like, like, I'll, like there's a recreation conference in Auckland, for example. I've got the sports portfolio, mm -hmm. but it'll, it'll use my entire budget to attend for a year. So just to yeah. clarify, the ones that come through to my office, I send on to Sean to go in the weekly roundup. Um, yeah, the weekly digest. So You're we can talking. actually, we can try and alert people to uh, send more that way. So you can see, them. and I, if it's a climate change one, I send it straight on to Sarah, or if it was a sport one, I'd send it on to portfolio holders. But we will alert across the organisation. Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. But you're doing that at the moment. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. The, the point is... We are, so we are doing it at the moment, well, but we're not... Everyone has got it. Like, you might get a sport one, Sarah will get a climate one at that moment. How many people have received one? How many people looked at them? How many people looked at them? They've been in the digest, and I think I've sent a couple on to Sarah. Okay. Uh, it was more that it's a question of the funding to attend. Mm -hmm. So that was really what... You know, I would, so I, I'm happy for the professional development to start 12k over the three years, but I think there needs to be a separate budget or ability for us to represent council at certain things that. Hmm. Okay, right. I thank you, Yanni. Tyler, hello. Hey guys, can you hear me? All right. Hmm. You're knocking yeah. knocking yourself around, you silly old duffer. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get some, trying to get some peace and quiet, and then bloody bail out. Um, <laughs> I uh, <clears throat> want to just have a. I'll make it quick. Uh, I prefer the triennial payment to be able to go to those IOD courses. That's something that I really wanted to do. Um, keen for an allocation of group training, and um, I do think there should be an allocation for representative duties, depending on how the council feels on that. And um, also, if we're making decisions over. One and a half billion dollars a year. I'm pretty sure we can have, you know, a few extra K to get ourselves trained up to do it. So I think that's really important. But yeah, that's those are my answers. Really quick, Helen, just for you to note down. Thank Thanks, you. Tyler. Um, Kelly. Um, yeah, I favour um, the triennial um, arrangement. Um, I, I felt that the uh, orientation we got as a new councillor at um, at Hagley Netball Courts was actually really useful uh, for getting to know each other and sort of uh, working through uh, some of the processes. Um, I think, you know, in the current financial climate, uh, I wouldn't want to see a, a big increase in the uh, amount we, we do spend, but because um, I think... 12,000 over the training was pretty reasonable, but when you look at a director's course, um, that in, it, in itself is, is 12,000. So there's your money all spent in, uh, in one go. Um, I haven't spent anything as yet. And I think um, I have actually a really low awareness about what is available uh, to do and, and what would be useful. Um, um, so yeah, some guidance on that would be would be really yeah. useful. Good, good questions. Okay, and lastly, Mark, because we're running out of time. Thank you. Yeah, um, just a thought in my head is we've heard pre-COVID mentioned in how we, there was a cut in the budget at that time. What would the budget sit at or if it was at sort of pre-COVID equivalent levels? Uh, my understanding is that next year's financial year is the budget inflation adjusted if it had stayed at those levels so that if you take off the 120 sorry if you take off the 25 off that 25 26 year that would be the budget if it had increased in the usual way and i do tend to um 
favour the idea of the triennial, the fact that you know, if it gives us access to do some IOD courses or something like that, plus do some conferences, I think that would be, be useful. Um, the group training does sound like a not a bad option either. I mean, if we had a group governance training or we could all get up to live speed to a similar level, I think it'd be quite useful. Um, also thinking about the specialisations and the portfolios, I mean, for myself, I'm thinking about something like Wasteman's, the, the waste conferences, um, and you know, whether there's access to, to those for the likes of Kelly and myself who sit in that waste space. Um, that's, that's just sort of my thoughts and having better awareness of what's available would be really useful. Okay, right, lastly, I'll just have a, I think, Helen, you've, you've heard that just about everyone is leaning towards the, the trinium one. Whether it's four grand, five grand or six grand, that's probably um, the thing. One thing, it's, def, it's definitely not transferable. If someone doesn't use it, they can't tap someone on the, so that's just, and I'd like it to be um, for, uh, divided over 17 of us, not 16 of us. Is that right? So you can throw that in there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. So we'll have, um, thank you very much, um, Helen you. and Dave, for that. Um, that concludes the public information sessions for today. Um, do, 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 and it concludes them for this week. Uh, we'll be back here in 15 minutes, but I know we've got to go somewhere else. So let's make sure we're back here at 10.45, please. Otherwise, we'll get ourselves in strife later. Thank you. Thank you.